If I say I'm a little bit stressed, it's because, yeah, I am. If you watched the video a couple of days ago, I talked about how I had to take care of a spider, a pretty big one. Well, if you've ever thought about it like I have, I've thought when you take care of an insect, what if like their big kind of cousin or something comes back? Like the equivalent of me taking out Bronny James or something, like knocking him out. Didn't really knock out this spider, smacked it with a broom, but you know what I had to do. And then like their big kind of uncle comes back. Well, yeah, a spider just today came back and it's juiced up, like juiced up. It's like taking steroids or something because it's literally the size of my hands. Last time I was exaggerating. No, this one is the size of my hands and I would show you with my camera, but it takes a long time to focus and I don't even want to point anything in that direction. But basically just know my room is pretty damn small. And well, the spider is basically an arm length away. So it's somewhere around there, which is also where my bed happens to be. Also happened to have a spider jump on my face before. So I'm not exactly playing those kind of games right now. If you're new to the channel, yes, um, this isn't normally what I talk about, but yeah, I even had to go up to the shops at like 11.30 PM just before they closed to get this thing. You see? Ooh, shouldn't do that to the camera. That was probably dumb. Basically, that's just a detour. I was just saying that's why I might be a bit stressed. So if I happen to like jump out of nowhere randomly during the video, that's why. Just giving you a heads up. But basically, yeah, today we're actually talking about Shea Gilders Alexander. If you didn't realize, it's not a talk on spiders or being scared of these huge spiders that happen to always be in my room and around my bed, which makes it even worse. But we're talking about Shea Gilders Alexander. And I just want to talk about how when we mention the best young guards in the league, we always talk about Devin Booker, Donovan Mitchell, Ja Morant, Zach Levine, Jalen Brown, LaMelo Ball. Like you could name every single one. Obviously Luka Doncic, but I think he's in a bit of a league of his own right now. The list goes on. And these are all great young guards. I'm not here to compare them because I just don't think it really serves any purpose of what I'm trying to do. I think a player that deserves to be mentioned just up the top of anyone in that list. He's as good as anyone in my opinion. And that is SGA, Shea Gilgis Alexander. He's definitely getting underrated, which I guess could be a form of disrespect. Everyone knows he's got game, but I don't think people understand just how good he's been. It took me a little while to realize just how good he's been. I was kind of sleeping on him as well. I'll admit it because I knew he was good, but not this good. SGA is having a fantastic season. In year three, it doesn't get enough credit what he's doing. Last year, in year two, after getting traded, he played with Chris Paul, Danilo Gallinari, Steven Adams, Dennis Schroeder for large periods of time off the bench. One of the best teams in the league, excluding the first few games of the season. OKC were a very good team. Now in his third year, He's the number one guy, and he's asked to play with Theo Maladone, Lou Dort, Alexei Pokashevsky, and Al Horford on a good night. And then on other nights, he's playing with, well, the OKC G League team. And he's still managing to put up ridiculous numbers on ridiculous efficiency with little to no spacing in his team. And he's just doing things that are, like, honestly quite remarkable. Now, before I go any further, if you could drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, just because I'm petrified of moving, so that would be cool. I don't know how that has any correlation, but basically just drop a like on the video, subscribe, it's free. It would be much appreciated. I make content like this every single day. That would be cool. Now, honestly, I'm gonna put my hand up and say, I thought it was gonna be a tough season for Shea. I didn't think he was going to like regress or anything. I thought he'd still average around 22 or something just because he was going to get more shots. But I thought you go away from playing with CP3, Danilo Gallinari, he had a bit of a struggle in the playoffs. He's going to struggle because he's not going to have the necessary players around him to help his efficiency and to help him transition into that lead guy. I was wrong. I was completely wrong because he's transitioned into that lead guy and not taken a step back in any single aspect. He's got better every single way possible. Efficiency, volume, playmaking, scoring, you name it, he's better at it than he was last year. And that's really quite remarkable. He's shooting 51, 40, 80. And then when you look at players who have a usage rate of above 20%, which is pretty much just anyone who's a primary or secondary ball handler, it's not very strict criteria. He has the 13th best true shooting percentage in the league, which again is quite remarkable considering you look at the names around him, that's just a bead of sweat, not a spider. And they're just ridiculous names. Shout out Lowry and Norman Powell, but they're not quite the names we're talking about. But the other names, yeah, those are the kind of names He's with. He's shooting nearly 63% on six and a half attempts a game at the rim. He's one of the best finishers at the rim among guards. He gets to the rim efficiently. He uses his combination of length, speed, size, variance of pace, and his ability as a passer to throw off defenders. I don't know if that... To throw off... To... I warned you that could happen. I warned you that could happen. I don't think that was anything. Basically, he's a really good finisher at the rim. Sorry, this video, like I said, is not normally what I make. So he uses that elite combination. Like he'll chuck up underarm layups from like three to four feet out off either hands, off the wrong foot, 
in traffic through three people. Like he just makes ridiculous plays. Honestly, ridiculous plays. That's kind of the only way to describe it. He's got such nice touch and the way he varies his speed, he'll just kind of wait till the defender's off balance and then attack him. He'll get his shoulder into the right place and then attack him. And then his touch, his finesse, his ability to finish with either hands. One of the elite finishers in the league and the numbers back it up. But just to emphasize my earlier point that Shea is doing all of this with little assistance. Again, I'm not trying to knock the OKC players because we'll acknowledge this is a young team, a rebuilding team that is out performing expectations and doing a good job and a lot of these players are actually good in their own way and will develop into good players but at the moment they're just not a good shooting team they don't have players that space the floor and there's still a lot of players really young in their careers that aren't actually great players they're good young players but there's a difference between being good players and a good young player so Shea's playing with very little spacing and he's also asked to do a lot um 93 percent of his two-point makes have been unassisted on the season 93% <laughs> so uh, Shade hasn't heard of letting someone else pass him the ball it's just let me do my thing and let me score and it's not like he's hogging the ball he's just an efficient player and does pretty much all of it himself 93% of it at least from two point range and then close to 70% from three-point range. These are ridiculous numbers. Like, they're ridiculous numbers. And then, like I mentioned, you pair in his efficiency with this, it's things that aren't normal. And in his third year, first year as a first option, these aren't normal numbers. They're elite numbers. So for him to be putting these up, he should have been an all-star. That's no question. When you look at his numbers, you look at his impact, he should have been an all-star, but we're not going to like talk about that. We don't need to dwell on that. That's a minor thing. When you look at SGA's career, he's going to be a 10-time all-star. He could be an MVP for all we know, the way he's progressing. So he's going to have enough accolades. Don't worry, Thunder fans. It's going to come. He steps up his game in the clutch as well. He's shooting damn near 50% from the field. And just as importantly, he's getting to the line consistently and converting at the line. The only thing that drops in the clutch is his three-point percentage percentage in general he's still one of the most efficient and prolific clutch scorers in the nba he's just elite at so many things but people would say oh his team's not very good so he's not better than the likes of donovan mitchell devin booker because his team doesn't have heaps of wins well the thunder are two and five without sga in the team one of those wins against the houston rockets the recent Houston Rockets who have lost 16 in a row, something absolutely absurd. So a team that's basically just handing out free wins. Like me, you, and three of your mates or three of my mates could go there and probably get a win. That's the Houston Rockets team that they beat. They're two and five, will still count it though. And with SGA in the team, they're 15 and 17, which is close to 500, which is still a very good effort. Shout out to Mark Dagner, who deserves some respect for coach of the year honors. No one's going to put him in the mix because people only talk about winning, winning coaches, which is dumb because you should be talking about people that do the most with what they have and he's doing a ton sga is also doing a ton as well but just look at it the perfect sample size is just recently the thunder won two games in a row sga goes out injured they get blown out by the knicks he comes back they beat a good memphis grizzlies team it's is it that simple no it's not that simple of course this memphis grizzlies team that they beat as well happened to be with like five g leaguers in the team from just a week ago they were playing in the g league and now they're beating a team that was 500 and sga is dropping 30 and clutch buckets against Ja Morant. That's the kind of thing that he does. And that's the kind of thing that's happening with him. So that's a reason why you shouldn't just count him out from the conversation of the best young guard just because his team doesn't have the best record. No, he's still incredibly impactful. And the numbers, the wins, everything you look at it, backs it up. But that's just from the scoring perspective. He's a very clever creator as well. He uses his threat as a three-level scorer. He can get to any position on the floor and then he can draw defenders and kick it out to shooters or he can draw defenders and drop it off to a big man rolling to the rim. A stat that I don't use a ton, but I thought it would just be interesting to look at because we've talked about how he's spacing, his shooting around him isn't the best. Well, when you look at a stat like potential assists, which basically just measures how many good looks a player is getting for his teammates, SGA's towards the top. His potential assists far outweigh his actual assists. And again, it's not a stat that I use all the time, but I think in context, it makes sense. It means that he's getting a lot better looks for his teammates than maybe his assist numbers suggest. So Nicole Jokic has the same potential assists at nearly nine assists a game, and SGA is only averaging just over six. It just goes to show that he's creating the looks that aren't always being converted. So don't just look at his assist numbers when you consider him as a playmaker. He's one of the better playmakers in the league. Another thing he's really good at is he thrives in the pick and roll. For similar reasons to what I've mentioned before. His combination of how he drives, he accelerates, he stops on a dime, he can shoot, he's got such good touch. It just makes him a nightmare to defend. Coming off a screen, that obviously makes him a nightmare and defenders just don't really know what to do. 
Pick your poison. One of the most efficient scorers in the pick and roll. The most efficient of any player averaging over eight possessions as a pick and roll ball handler in the league. And then when you just look at players in general, just pick and roll efficiency. He's top five in effectiveness in the pick and roll top five in the league, and he's doing it on way more volume than these other names. Again, these stats, they're just ridiculous, and it show, goes to show, I'm not someone who's always so heavy on stats, but when people try to say, oh, SGA's a good player, but he's not at that level. No, he's at that level, and every single metric suggests that if you watch it, he can control the tempo and the pace of the game. The OKC Thunder are a different team. They're a competitive, borderline playoff-level team. Like, they're nearly 500 when he's on the floor, and that's dealing with injuries. George Hill has barely played. Al Horford's been in and out. He himself has been in and out. Other players have been in and out. They've played guys like Alexei Pokashevsky, who's starting to pick it up now, but he had some games where he was rough, and that's to be expected, and I don't mind that, but he's still managing to keep this team close to 500 with all of this in mind. That's a feat in itself. So don't just look at the overall wins and suggest, oh, he's not as good as player X because he doesn't have that many wins. No, what he's doing with what he's got and what he's been able to do is ridiculous, and the numbers and just watching the game suggest just that. But he's not just an offensive-minded player either. He's a great defender as well. Maybe not a great defender. He's a very good defender. He can switch onto ones, twos, threes at times. He can get in the passing lanes. He does a number of things. He just makes the right decisions on defense. And I like how he's normally locked in. Often with guys like this, you could excuse him. In his third year, he's taking a big jump. You've seen guys like this take a big jump before offensively and then just go, straight down defensively. It's kind of like just a direct correlation up, down. That's kind of how it seems to be. No, he seems to stay the same as a good defender and just go an elite offensively. This guy does it all. He really does it all. He should have been an all-star without a doubt. He definitely should have been an all-star. I'm excited to see what can happen once he gets some other running mates or once these other guys lift up their standard. Like we've seen Pokashevsky, he's turning into the goat right in front of our eyes. We know what he can be. Lou Dort, obviously a defensive monster. But in general, once this Thunder team starts to elevate around him and he gets some more shooters, it's kind of scary to think how good he could be. And he's just scratching the surface. He's already one of the better players in the NBA. And I don't think people are giving him enough credit. If you did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. Wish me luck while I try to edit this video without getting attacked by a spider the size of my hand who's coming for redemption. Other than that, I'll catch you next time. Bye.